What's something considered normal in society that you refuse to do? Forbidding my straight male partner to spend time with female friends. He's a grown man. He should know how to hold healthy boundaries. It shouldn't be on me to keep him from cheating. If he's really gonna fall into the pants of the first girl I leave him alone with, she can have him. Similarly, blaming someone else for my partner's failings and or trying to win back someone who doesn't want me. He's a big boy who can make his own choices, even bad ones, and I want a partner who wants to be with me, not someone I had to talk into staying. Give blood relatives special privilege when I don't know them. Talk to toxic family members. My husband's brother's wife is so drama ridden that my husband can't even talk to multiple people in his family. Like people keep dropping like flies ever. Since she's been in the picture it's terrible. I feel this. My in-laws live right down the street and they are ultra toxic. I obsess over the fact that I'm stuck with these people for the rest of my life. The husband is angry and has no self-awareness or self-control. And the wife is a spoiled selfish person. The kicker is that they have children who go from school to school to school. They get kicked out of special schools for kids with behavior issues. The kids are guilty of only one thing which is acting like their parents do at home. But at school, the wife fights with the schools, sues her employers, and just the other day the police came by to do a wellness check. They're upper middle class slash wealthy, and she's educated. Zero self-awareness. I could complain forever. Where Macup. If I can deal with my face, so can everyone else. People get used to one's default look. So if I don't wear Macube nobody says anything. And if I dress up I get compliments. Which, to my thinking, beats putting in a bunch of effort every day. And having everyone treated as normal. And then have them comment when I don't wear Macube. Also I hate the feeling of having stuff on my skin. Whether it's greasy, sticky or powdery. It's bad enough having to put up with sunscreen salt and dust didn't see it here so figured i'd share live in a city i was born in a large city lived there until i was 11 then moved to the woods i've lived in the woods since then and although i have visited citizens i could never live there too many people too much noise and i just don't feel comfortable i feel more comfortable taking walks at night in the woods than i would in a city i don't know if it's been mentioned already but i'll throw in my five cents the need to be available all the time. I for example always having your phone on you. I like going for long walks and leaving my phone at home. I don't feel guilty for missing texts or calls. It's just stressful being expected to be available all hours of the day. I refuse to pay for an autograph of any kind. I've been a book signing or two, but that was because I liked the author. Every famous person I've met has been by total accident climb up the ladder and be the boss i could but why completely agree i've moved up in companies and taken supervisor type positions it always comes with a lot more headache with not near enough pay or benefit i work for a small company now and the owner slash boss is married to the job and i'm just like no thank you i'm cool just maintaining my role as just another spoke in the wheel I owned my own business and hated the headache, sold out and kind of drifted along for a couple of years, got an offer that pays me stupidly well to do the work I love, and working for a boss who practically lives at the office dealing with all the bullshit I hated doing as a business owner. State taxes are due, and there's a dispute over how we file them, sucks to be you, I'm going home, machine is broken and somebody needs to spend half the weekend fixing it, yeah. Whatever, see you Monday. To almost quote Spider-Man point with no power, comes no responsibility. One night stands, in timid times doesn't mean anything to me, if I can't build a connection first. Have never and will never use a dating app. Share photos of my kids on social media, I find it seriously messed up how much some people share their kids lives online. I get sharing moments with family, but that can be done via text or holiday cards. Walk in the house with shoes, why people want to track all the junk from the outside and smear it over the floors, bed, and couch, no thanks. Bore other people with photos of everyday stuff they see all the time anyway, for example, the meal I'm going to eat, the shoes I bought, the place I'm at. Dress for the weather, I dress for whatever environment I'm going to be in the most that day, which is work, indoors, in most cases, if I'm gonna be indoors. 
I'm not gonna wear a sweater all day. I'm gonna dress to be comfortable in an insulated building with the heat running. If that means I get weird looks for wearing shorts in the winter, so be it. Have kids. I'm a 38 year old woman with lots of experience with kids I like kids. But people think that is a reason to birth them. By fast fashion, or pretty much any fashion whose supply chain is questionable. I used to, then I found out not only how and where those clothes begin their lives, but also how and where those clothes end their lives. It was so horrific. I decided I was done. I now buy second hand, or I save and buy pieces from independent tailors from sites like Etsy, and I research the tailor too. I also took some of the money I saved from clothes shopping and got a sewing machine. I'm learning to sew and make my own summer dresses. I'm not good enough yet to take on complex clothing, but I'm learning. Recording yourself doing an act of charity or a good deed in general completely devalues it the second you hit post. My main counterpoint to this is that it at least allows some form of positive news within a negatively saturated medium. It's a bit of a virtue signal, but it still has a positive impact on the individual and supports a trend of doing good, even if there's a bit of narcissism mixed in. I always get into this argument that the deed has more merit than the motive behind it. People let the good die for the perfect. If you do a good deed with bad intentions people are still going to judge you poorly. But a good deed was at least done. If you do a bad deed with good intentions you are still going to be judged even worse. But the world is worse off. Let's say an influencer films themselves giving a homeless guy shoes and a jacket. Even though their intention is get likes and more fame. Is the deed less? At the end of the day the person who needed shoes and a jacket got shoes and a jacket. And maybe similar people will also follow suit. Or possibly the influencer is in a position to do more good with more income. If you think the motive of the deed matters more than the deed I suggest you spend a winter without the shoes and a jacket and gain some perspective on how important gestures like that are. Regardless of motivation, altruism in its purest form is wonderful, but when people are trying we have to accept what they are giving in regards to charity. This might be oddly specific, it's wearing flip flops. I grew up in a tourist beach town. I have never owned a pair of flip flops in my life. I find them wildly uncomfortable and people in my hometown look at me like a crazy person when I tell them I don't own a pair. That every time you drink, that you are to get blackout sloppy blind messed up. Do people not know their limits, or is whole appeal of drinking to get faced every single time? I even bartender for a while, and I still, don't get it. I can go the bar or liquor store, get a few drinks, and be done. Walk a straight line to the door, and not slur goodnight to the crowd as I leave. I've only been blackout drunk 4 times in my life. I'm 31. Meanwhile everyone else I know. Two hours after the first pop top are so pissed they can't even sit up. <laughs>